And welcome back. Today we're flying out something a little bit overweight. The P61 Black Widow. It's not the premium variant. That thing is kind of doo-doo. So I won't be taking it out. And if you wonder where the radar is. I turned it off. It gives me an epileptic seizure. And I don't need that in my life right now. For you today I got an 8 kill game. As well as a 5 kill game with a pretty funny ending. And I'm using these games because they're pretty showing for the vehicle. Because all in all the P61 Black Widow is extremely situational. And for the most part you really have to just make do with the cards you are dealt with. You are always very annoying to kill. And that's mainly due to the gunner that's on the top. Or the turret that's on the top. 450 kills. 360 degree coverage. You can shoot that straight up. If someone stays below you. You rotate your plane. You pitch up a little bit. It's very easy to always have this gunner pointing at someone. The thing I like to do is... Kill the things that are the most annoying to kill once they're paying attention to you. So I like to use the air spawn to focus hyper maneuverable planes or things that are extremely fast. A6M was actually paying attention. Wasted a little bit of my altitude here. No big deal. I'm still going 650 and have a squad mate right there. So we are just going to pull back out here and convert all that speed back into altitude. The A6M2, not really worried about it. Yak 9, not really worried about it as long as not a 9U. And with that in mind, I'm not really too worried about dropping some energy, dropping some altitude to kill a guy real quick. I put all that speed back into altitude. I zoom back up. It's an A6M2. Fat chance he's going to be catching me. So I can just level out and I will go help my teammates over there. Because right now the furball on the deck is a little bit massive. I don't want to dive too much. As I said, I don't mind losing some energy. But I'm not about to drop back down to the deck. And get four of them diving on me. This thing is pretty durable in terms of staying in the air. Getting hit in it however isn't the best idea. As this thing really doesn't like damage at all. As I said it's easy to keep in the air. It's not very easy to keep it effective. Aiming it will become pain in the ass. You will become very slow. And all in all you just don't want to get hit in it. You're pretty big. And going head on is actually not the best thing in the world. You do have these guns that will outgun most of the enemies that you will face. The thing is however, if they commit back, if they shoot back, not very likely that you can dodge them and they can very easily dodge your guns. Because well, you're kind of fat, so they can just pull out of the way, pull back in, and at that point you kind of have to commit. Because if you try to dodge, you are going to die. And that's going to be kill number two in the meantime as we are diving towards the deck. And now most of them are pretty low. I am going pretty fast here and I'm just going to be trying to beat my teammate out towards this BF-110. Getting a little bit greedy here. I'm feeling feeling some kills here, which was right. So we just shoot a little bit. We hit him and he instantly blows up. A and M2s, lovely set of guns. And that's gonna be kill number three. So now, still going 600, going to a little bit of a shallow climb where this thing kind of holds its energy pretty well. If you go straight up, expect to just drop out of the air because it's not uh, well. The retention in 90 degrees up. It's a pretty fat bitch. Expect it to fall out of the air like one. Right now just climbing towards the middle. Using that speed to get a little bit of altitude back. Not the most. But at this point I can at least dive a little bit. Pick up some speed. And make it so that the people on the deck. If they want to head on me. If they want to come towards me. We won't be on equal ground. So I can use this to one cool my engines. My speed isn't as important because I have a little bit of altitude on them. Plus my total energy in this climb will be higher than going straight on the deck. Because I would have stayed at around 600, 550. And not build up any energy at all. I would have maintained it. But I wouldn't gain anything. Look at the enemy team. They're doing exactly that. They're chasing my team on the deck. They're staying low. They're turning. They're not going at that top speed. And I'm going on 350 or 380 speed. At a little bit higher altitude. These guys are not going 580. They will not be able to pitch up for me. So right now I'm in a very good position. My engines aren't on fire. I'm directly above these guys. And all I need to do now is pick the right target. And kill them as quickly as I can. Because getting swamped in this thing. Other than running away and using your gunner. It's not going to be a very great time. ITP tried to pitch up for me. I didn't take the head on. And look at that. He stalled himself out. And I want the ITP out of the game mainly because of that gun. 37mm, extremely damn fast. And well, this thing is pretty easy to hit. So I want that dead. And now I just turn towards the other guys. And the two guys on my 6 will be easily outran. Because of all of the energy that I just picked up. 
Use the gunner a little bit. Just spray at the LA-5. All skill, no luck. I definitely know how to use gunners. <coughs> Very great. A6M2 turns in front of me because he's engaged with someone else. We switch targets and we shoot him out of the air. And now we are just going to keep flying straight because I don't want to turn for the head-on with that A6M. We're both pretty slow. But we're going to get into that head-on at a very close range. And we're likely going to trade. He's going to hit me. Something is going to happen. And I'm not feeling it. So I'm just going to break off. A6M starts the turn. So we will start the turn after him. He's going pretty slow. Now we have some separation. He moved a little bit. He's even slower. The chances of him dodging a head-on now are slim to none. He dodges the head-on with the XP-50. But that thing is kind of awkward to aim at lower speed. And we are just going to hold the trigger down. Because I won that kill. And that's going to be kill number 7. And that's basically game. There's going to be a bomber going RTB. Look at the ticket count. That's 2 minutes of flying. We lost all the tickets. And we almost lost here. Luckily he dies just in time. If he was able to repair. What would have happened is. He would have probably jade out. Tickets would have gone down. And we totally would have deserved that loss. Because they fragged a little bit of ground units at the start. We have 4 planes in the air. They have 0. Having less planes definitely means you won the ground war. So, that means you should deserve the win. A sets me on fire. No big deal. Game is over. And here are the results if you care about such a thing. For the next game, not the most interesting game. But I do advise you to at least skip towards the end area. Where something happens that, well, is pretty common nowadays. It's a little bit of an older clip here. But it's mostly about the ending of this clip. So, P61, again, 2 km air spawn, putting that to use, getting a little bit of altitude. 5.7 km, basically, 5.6. And we are above everyone, even the Puromirsky, or however you want to pronounce that shit. 109 on the right, 190 diving out. And I'm kind of just free to pick and choose what target I want to go for. XP50 creeping along here, because, well, that thing is kind of busted, you know. Totally 3.7, or 4.0 actually now, material. But no biggie. We are above everyone. So we can kind of just pick and choose yet again just like the last game. And you really do want a little bit of altitude. Otherwise you are forced to go defensive. And 99% of the time going defensive in this thing means you are going to be using your turret. Unless of course you uh, have the same thing as you had at the end of this video. 109. Too busy going for the XP-50. Which isn't the worst idea. Because the XP-50 is definitely a very big threat. So you want that out of the air. 109 gets triple teamed, dies pretty quickly. I turn my engines down, I'm starting to glide, and I see a 109 going pretty slow. So we hold the trigger down, we shoot him out of the air, and we continue our merry way. Who is here? One guy above us. He's busy with the XP-50. He's coming towards us though. If he tries to break off from the XP-50 fight, which he will likely do, and then go for us, it might be pretty bad. Luckily... 264 flies right in front of our guns. We blast them out of the air. And the other 109 gets shot down by the P61. As mentioned previously. Spitfire going pretty slow here. But I'm still going to have quite a hard time getting guns on this guy. And that's mainly because this thing is so damn floaty. Luckily he's going pretty slow. Or pretty predictably rather. He's not very slow. We shoot his wing off. We hit him with the AI gunner. And now he's flying about with one wing. Unfortunately for us, a Spitfire with one wing still flies pretty well. Very easy to land, repair and take back over that thing. So we just want to get some separation. Don't want to get fragged by a guy that's actually dead. So he's out of range. We just start using our 50 gals here. In the hope that we might nick the engine. We might blow him up. Might set him on fire. Just outright kill him. No matter how, I want him dead. We get a hit at like 1.6 kilometers and 50 gals. No HE filler. Likely not going to be doing much damage there. So we go for the Spitfire again. He is limping back to base. And I see the G55 on the right there. I don't really want to engage it. For the simple reason that at any point if I get close. He can break off and force a head on with him. I'm looking at him. I'm trying to see what he's trying to do. But I don't want to invite him into coming head on with me. So what I want to do is go for the Spitfire for as long as I can. In the hope that I might get a hit on him. I'm kind of getting sick of the fact that I keep getting hit or not hitting at all. And I'm not really able to aim because this plane is kind of awkward. And now the G55 is right next to us. The idea here was he might go for me. 
gives the XP50 very easy chance to kill him. If I go for him from the get-go, likely he's going to force a head-on with me. Then I die. And then the XP50 has to dogfight the G55 as well as the 190 that's coming in. So I either can make it so the G55 breaks off and give him the position to kill him. Or I die in the trade. Might not even kill him. And then it's 2v1. So I played it a little bit like a bitch there. But I couldn't risk it because this plane in that situation isn't the best. I didn't want that Spitfire to get back to base. I'd rather get a secure kill. I'd rather... Bet on the fact that I can kill that guy because I would have been able to very easily and trade in a head on. Spitfire goes back to base and then it's 3v1. Worst case scenario. Worst case scenario here. Spitfire dies. XP50 dies. 2v1. Still better than a 3v1. And that's why I took that bet. Might have shafted my teammate a little bit. But I'm looking to win here. I'm not looking for one person. I'm looking at the, trying to look at the bigger picture. If it wasn't... Well, apparent yet. Guy on the XP50. He's bringing them all back down to the deck. He gets killed. Now we have two of these guys right next to each other. And it's a 2v1 just like predicted. Except I have quite a bit of altitude on these guys. So I can try to play with that. 190 is exiting the area. He's not coming towards us. So G55 is going very slow here. The guy that just died says something Russian in chat. I suspect he is annoyed. He's mad. And I get that. Not holding it against you. But I'm keeping that in the back of my head. Because I know that that guy is squatted. And the last thing I want right now is losing the game. Because the guy is mad. And he thinks I should be team kill. G55 dodges the guns. Dodges my pass. And the 190 is now coming back. G55 is going pretty slow. Might be able to kill him here with the 50 kills. I get a few hits on him. But again it's at like 1.5 kilometers. And doesn't have HE filler. So my damage is pretty piss poor. Luckily, we have the separation, we have the energy, and we can just get a little bit of distance here. And I want to re-engage the G55. G55 would have been dead right there if that 190 wasn't there. Because I could have just gone up, go into a little bit of a shallow climb. That G55 has no business trying to, f well, chase that up. And what's going to end up happening is that the G55 is without energy, without the ability to dodge my guns. And I still have about 250 rounds of a and 2s which is more than sufficient. He would have been dead. Unfortunately, 190 is right next to him. And what do they do? They return back to the airfield. 190, he's crit, he's damaged. Not a big deal. G55, he's going to be camping the, the airfield till the end of the game. I'm not going to be ranting about that because we've done that plenty. But he is essentially going to win the game by sitting on the airfield, being invincible. And with this thing going into the airfield... I mean, you can imagine that that's not the best idea. It's not the most fun. This thing is massive. It doesn't really maneuver that well. And the AA is kind of proximity based or AOE based. So it's very easy for it to just keep damaging you over and over and over until you instantly die. Or instantly until you die. If it was instantly, you wouldn't be damaged over and over. Right now, you might wonder why I'm going so damn slow. And that's because I, well... I kind of did a big dum dum and I put my prop pitch on 50%. I toggled auto uh, Mac and I forgot that this thing doesn't have auto prop pitch. So I'm cruising at 50% prop pitch right now, which is why I'm so insanely slow. So yeah, kind of unfortunate. Otherwise, I probably would have died here because of that 190 as well as the G55 on 50% prop pitch if I was still on 100. I probably would have been able to dogfight both of those guys in that situation. If there was no AA here. And we got a P51 on our 6. And it's the guy that squatted with the guy that talked Russian to me. So I already expect something. I'm starting the dodge. And here it comes. He's trying to kill me. Because what do you do when you lose a teammate? Because of maybe bad play. Maybe someone made a mistake. You kill him as well to make the odds even worse. So we start a dogfight with a P51C. He turns significantly better. He climbs better. He does everything better basically. But luckily... He is a whole dog, his IQ is 12, and he's going to end up passing in front of us. He gets reversed. Again, if I had 100% prop pitch, I might have been able to hit that, because I had a little bit more power, had a little bit more controllability just before the shot. I switched the gun of you. In the end, completely unnecessary, because this guy is actually bad enough to fly in front of my guns. Luckily, get a funny meme uh, turret kill, I guess. Double tap with the A&Ms, tell him to fuck off. And we are on our merry way. And I'm not going to be showing you the last 
five to six minutes of this game because I'm gonna be circling the airfield and getting fragged by it. Good night, hot dog. Rest in peace, you won't be missed. And that's all I have for you today. G55 is going to win the game by camping the airfield because you know that's how you play these games nowadays. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice Sunday, and I will see you all in the next one.